Hello everybody and welcome to today's video on how to remotely configure an AES subscriber using the INCC. Now we want to log into the INCC and there's two ways of accessing the subscriber that we want to remotely configure. One is by selecting subscribers on the left hand menu and then scrolling through the list until you find the subscriber you would wish to configure. The second is by going to the search by unit ID box. And I'm going to go ahead and enter a subscriber account ID and then select this unit ID. Now, in order to remotely configure the AES subscriber, we're going to select the settings tab. And you'll see all of the options that are available for remote configuration. First, we have timing. This is how often the radio will check in. By default, we select 2345 generally. The secondary alarm delay is how long the subscriber will wait before sending an alarm of the same type. So we generally set this to 10 seconds. Uh, the contact debounce is something that's only used in older models of the AES subscribers, which are no longer sold. And then we have our acknowledgement delay. The acknowledgement delay is how long the radio is going to wait for an acknowledgement before sending that act delay trouble. Now that we've updated our subscriber, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I have on purpose left uh, this acknowledgement delay as a non-default setting so I can show you when we hit the set default button, what happens is it automatically sets all of these to AES's defaults. Now we hit save and you'll always see a green banner in the top letting you know that your settings have been saved to the subscriber. On the left hand side, we have the radio packet TTL settings. And TTL stands for time to live. This is how long the radio packets will live before they get to the receiver. So a TTL check-in time mean of three minutes means if a check-in packet doesn't get to the receiver within three minutes, it will just poof, disappear. Now, this is very helpful in case you have uh, a J4 trouble relay issue that's putting a lot of signals on your network or an IntelliPro lock-on issue. Three minutes after you fix the issue, uh, this will return your network back to new. If you have these set to zero, that means it's set to forever, which means that um, any of the AES radio packets will have to go through an IP link, a multi-net receiver, as well as into the alarm automation software, and then the dispatcher will have to decide whether it's a real signal or a fake signal. So we highly recommend you have these set to a value. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want alarm set to one minute because we want to give the alarm time to reach its destination. Our default, though, as you'll see, is 180 minutes for alarms. We recommend 10 minutes for non-critical signals and 180 minutes for critical signals. Below this, we have, you can turn off the transmitting function, turn off the radio of a subscriber by selecting turn off. You also have uh, auto test supervision. This is gonna be turned on by default. We also can turn off IntelliPro messages, the subscriber repeating function, and the telephone line cut function. In addition to that, we can remotely reset the subscriber, uh, which is basically turning it off and then turning it back on again. The next thing we can configure remotely is zone configuration. We see all eight zones that are on board and how they are set. These can be set to whatever uh, you'd like them to. Just be careful, supervised means an alarm on open and an alarm on short. So you can program all of the zones accordingly if you'd like to have a restoral sent, you can hit the restoral checkbox. If you would like to save these settings, you select the save button in the top right hand corner, and that will send the zone configuration to the subscriber. And that's it. That's all there is to remotely configuring an AES subscriber using the INCC. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment or contact us at support. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.